increase your efforts to achieve it. Hi, this is Kalpana Reddy from Krishi High School. Today I'm here to discuss about class 8, chapter 2, that is the energy from the earth. So before moving into the topic, I would like to wish you all a happy and a healthy morning, children. Hope everyone is doing good, right? So as the topic is about energy from the earth, isn't it? So here, after concluding the topic, you will be able to know. That means the main objectives of this lesson is describe the solar energy from the sun rays, explain about the sun rays and earth surface, describe the contrast between land and water, identify the temperature of atmosphere, describe about heat balance, illustrate the high and low temperature on earth, describe about the heating of the atmosphere and exam examine the moderate and extreme climate, right? So these all things you will be familiar with. Now moving into the topic, introduction. So we have learned about the diversity, ocean and continent, mountains, plateaus, etc. in our previous classes, isn't it children? So we have learned about all these diversities, oceans, continents, mountain, plateaus, etc. in our previous classes. So we also know that the solar energy travels from sun to earth in the form of rays. So generally, how this, like the rays, what do you get? From where it travels, the solar energy. What is solar energy? The energy what we get from sun, isn't it? The energy what we get from sun. So we use it in a multiple purpose, children. So the solar energy travels from sun to earth in the form of rays. So in the like image also, you can just have a look. The solar radiation which is received by the earth's surface is called insulation. So the solar radiation which is received, so the radiation or the rays, uh, I mean to say the, uh, like, uh, the rays which travels from sun to earth, it is called the insulation, the solar radiation which is received by the earth, okay, surface is called the insulation. Now the sun rays fall at an angle of about 90 degree on the earth and they fall slantingly towards the pole. So the, you can see that the sun rays, what, what it falls on the earth children, it directly falls on the like uh, at the angle of 90 degree that means directly towards the equator it will be 90 degree and it goes slanting towards the pole this is called the angle of incidence next now solar radiation sun is the principal source of energy on earth's surface and it is like a powerhouse which gives energy in the form of light and heat so sun is the principal source means the main source of energy on earth surface and it is like a powerhouse it's like a powerhouse which gives energy in the form of light and heat so how like what type of energy we get from uh, sun children heat and light isn't it heat and light so the energy is known as solar radiation so the energy what we get from sun is called as solar radiation when a body produces energy it is called as radiation so when the body produces energy it is called as radiation Sun also release energy in the form of UV rays, radio waves, X-rays, which we can neither feel nor see. Okay, the, the solar energy, what is produced by the sun, that we can feel it, isn't it? The heat and light, isn't it? We can feel it, but the energies which are, uh, the energy which, uh, like, which is released in the form of UV rays or radio waves, X-rays, they are invisible. They are invisible. Neither we can see nor we can Feel it, children. So the solar radiation that reaches the Earth's surface is called insulation. So as I already said, the solar radiation which reaches the Earth, which is received by the Earth, is called insulation. The amount of energy received at the ground level is less when compared to the actual energy which is received by the Earth atmosphere. It is because most of the energy is reflected by the Earth atmosphere. So actually the amount of energy what is released by the Earth when it reaches to the ground level or the Earth surface children, so the amount decreases. Why? Because the the uh, like I mean, the uh, energy 
what the exactly the earth receive it get decreases by the time it reaches on the earth because by the time it receives on the earth so the energy will get reflected back to the atmosphere the energy will get reflected back to the atmosphere some part of it so what happened so the amount get decreases so the most of the energy get reflected to the like atmosphere so the amount get decreases so harmful rays like uv rays will not reach the ground this made all living being humans animals and trees etc to live on the earth so like the harmful rays which are released by the sun like uv rays will not directly reach on the ground okay so because of which we are able to survive on the planet is that clear to children so clouds and smokes or dust absorbs the solar rays and reflects them away due to this it will be very cool during the cloudy day so clouds and smoke or dust absorbs the solar rays so and it reflects them away so during the winter season what happens so the most part of energy is absorbed by the clouds and smokes so this is the reason why and reflect them away so this is the reason why during the winter season it will be very cloudy and during the rainy season also it will be little bit cloudy okay the temperature get decreases now coming to the greenhouse a greenhouse is also called called as glass house so you can just see in the image how the nursery or the how they have grown the like plants isn't it children the plant saplings and everything so how they have grown it okay and how like the process how they grow the plants okay the process how they cultivate the crops uh, in this way is called as the greenhouse so the greenhouse is also called as the glass glass house these are the houses which are made by human societies human grow crops by creating an artificial environment so this is an artificial environment which is created by the human children which makes them comfort to grow the crops okay because according to the need of uh, like temperature and all they set it and they will grow the crops we can grow vegetables and fruits in very cold region by building green house by irrigating the fields a marshy environment can be created to grow like paddy crops like paddy next the sun rays and the earth surface sun rays and earth surface due to the curved nature of the earth surface the earth which reach the ground do not heat the earth surface uniformly in the displayed image you can observe that the amount of solar energy which falls on the smaller area and the larger area is the same however it gets warmer on the equator than near the poles because of the curved nature so here what happen children because of the curved nature you know that the ball the the earth is in a spherical shape isn't it it's in a spherical shape so because of the curved nature so actually the rays which are released by the sun, sun is uniform like i mean say it's uh, like uh, it will be in the same amount but when it spreads on the earth the amount get decreases because of the curved nature because of the curve the area which is nearby the equator it get more heated okay it get more heated but whereas when you compare to the polar regions so there the temperature will be low because of the curve nature of the earth okay because the sun rays goes slantingly towards the polar region next the sun rays falls at an angle of about 90 degree on the equator as and falls slantingly towards the pole the angle is called angle of incidence okay in the equatorial region it is cloudy after midday and fewer sun rays fall on the ground even if the extreme sun fall on it that's the reason why the equatorial region are not warm as the region which are immediately north or south to them therefore it increases to north in north during november and december and decreases during may and june okay now next land and water contrast the temperature distributing will be different and varies over land and ocean it can be absorbed by measuring the temperature on continents and oceans so here for example if a, a, a piece of land is there at the same time uh, like a means a water body is there so the sun rays uh, which is received by the earth children so the land is a good conductor of heat that means what it gets heated very quickly whereas when you compare with the water bodies it will take more time to get heated okay 
so this is the reason why like meant to say the temperature will be more on land whereas on the water whereas the water bodies are different oceans will take more time to heat and cool here like when you see the land is a good as the land is a good conductor of heat it get heated and cooled very easily okay children next heating of the atmosphere the sun rays first heat the earth surface but not the atmosphere or the air around us actually the atmosphere allows the rays to pass through without being heated by them earth radiated the heat which heats up the air around us because of this the earth surface is warmer when compared to the higher reaches of the atmosphere so the directly when the rays are released by the sun so it uh, like uh, it is passed through the atmosphere but the atmosphere will not allow the rays to get heated okay so when it reaches the earth and it reflects the sun rays to the and it uh, like uh, and it uh, reflects the rays towards the atmosphere by which the atmosphere will get heated children even it reaches to the atmosphere it will be little bit less compared understood children okay next heat balance earth re radiates heat in different way one third of heat is immediately reflected into space the rest heat up the earth surface which is turn heat the atmosphere and then finally get radiated into the space the amount of it which remains in earth will accumulate and it becomes hotter if the entire heat is not radiated by it conversely if the earth receives less heat than the heat radiates by it then it would get much cooler so when the heat which when when the like how the heat get balance so the heat get balance in different ways one third of heat is immediately reflected into space one third of heat in immediately it get reflected into the space and the rest heat up the earth surface which in turn heats the atmosphere as i already explained you and then finally gets radiated into the space okay okay children so by this i'm just going to conclude the wind up the class children and uh, in the next session we are going to learn about the second part of the lesson so till then you revise the class once again and if you have any doubt preview the video again and again children and because for your comfort only i have texted the like a content also so that you can read and uh, read again and again if you don't get the topic okay thank you